Hey, JB, we uh, got the green light to go ahead and, and shoot season two. So I need the craziest route that you could possibly think of. What do you got? <laughs> well, it is funny you should ask because I've been doing a whole bunch of research on Big Bend. It's the most remote place you could think of. Not only that, I mean, it completely defies what you think of with Texas. 8,000 foot mountains, canyons. I mean, it's a very, very ambitious, several sections, goes through super steep mountains. There's this abandoned volcano caldera called the Solitario. It, it's, it's gnarly. I mean, it spans basically two bikepacking routes, plus connecting them between that you're supposed to do in like six days. I mean, that's, that's literally the type of terrain. It's like really loose, chundry, sand, I mean, pebbles, cactus. Yeah, just it's just wild out there. And so how many water stops or towns are we going through? Well, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, this is more remote than the core of Death Valley as far as towns. I mean, it's pretty out there. There's like one town in the middle, Terlingra. But yeah, I mean, it's 350 miles. I mean, it's going to be perfect for a three-day trip. And I think the kind of thing where if we use a grizzle and we have like the water bottle cages on the fort, we should be a lot better off. You know, I think it'd be our chance to kind of redeem ourselves from Death Valley because we got our asses kicked. Uh, yes, but I spent all of season one complaining and, and uh, laying on the ground and contemplating my existence in the cosmos. Uh, I need to redeem <laughs> myself. So you say it's a three-day route. Uh, let's do it in one shot, nonstop, all 350 miles through the night. Okay, that sounds terrible. I mean, I, I mean I'm, I'm up for it. I'll give it a shot. I, I, don't, know, I don't know if it's a good idea. Are you cold, cold, cold? Yeah, I'm f***ing really cold. So, I put together this route across the Big Bend and back. And I presented it to Tyler. I thought, okay, this is gonna be awesome. 350 miles, it'd be a great three-day trip. Uh, but then he said, you know, that's too easy. 350 miles in three days? That's nothing, man. I need to make it, we need to make it harder. And this asshole says, hey, let's just do it nonstop. When we're doing these, it needs to be un undoubtedly very difficult. We are self-supported with the exception of two cash drops uh, at mile 80 and mile 210. So these, these treasure chests in the middle of the West Texas desert uh, are the only places that we're gonna be able to get, you know, resupplies. Let's see what's in the treasure chest. Yeah! Whoa! We need to do something different, you know? We always need to push ourselves we need to expand our boundaries. We need to learn new skills. But this, this had me really scared. Yeah, right now, the vibes are good. The desert is just absolutely gorgeous. We've got perfect conditions, a warm day today. It's like the best day of the week. And all this prep, and now we're finally riding. And I feel like uh, 
also like it's just really dialed now. I think we we kind of figuring this stuff out a little bit. We'll see. I don't know why, but I feel so optimistic. I'm smiling, I'm happy, I'm in the right frame of mind. It's beautiful out here. The roads were washboard, rough, sandy, but the suspension fork was just eaten. I mean, just, just eaten this dirt. It was no big deal. It is bumpy. And this is very similar to Death Valley. And this, what we learned from that, we are applying to this and I am so much happier with this setup. These big 2.0 tires, the suspension fork, which I really didn't want to ride. I honestly really wanted to ride my Grail with 42s. Um, that would have been a bad choice. That would have been a bad choice for this. So I'm very happy with the setup. We're starting to hit some of our first little bit of elevation. All right, how much elevation? 27,000 feet. Okay, cool. Yes! Yeah! Yeah, dude. Ooh. Trying to catch Tyler. He's moving. He's been gunning. Been trying to chase him for like 10 minutes. He's riding good. Uh, riding strong! You're making me struggle. Uh, Tyler was really riding above his level on the technical. I mean, I don't know if it was the bigger tires or just, you know, experience doing all these things, but I mean, he was like cleaning stuff. Usually I'm like, you know, riding ahead on this stuff, but he was cleaning a lot of the sections that I didn't expect him to ride. And like, I mean, it was, I was like, all right, he's, he's together this, this, uh, this morning. It's so sandy, rocky. Out of the last six impossible routes, five impossible routes, you know, I just been tongue and spoke, chomping at his ass, dude, all day. But right now, man, I, I'm actually really impressed with myself. I was douchey, but like, dude, cleaning some of those sections, my fitness right now, everything right now is on the up. I'm feeling amazing. I'm riding really smart and good. The bike is a beast. I don't really know what else to say. I hope we can continue. Then we turn off into an even smaller trail and it's like, okay, we're going over rocks. There's kind of loose stuff rattling underneath our wheels. Um, you're kind of fighting for traction. Uh, we had a couple hike bikes Look at this. Look at that. What is this? Big guys, little guys, cactus, pointy guys. We're good. We're good. You know, we're several hours in. Um, luckily, the water spot that I had scoped out on the map actually was amazing. You know, you kind of roll in and there's a hose pump right there. Ah. Wow. Right. You. Um, is it on? Yeah, let it roll. Yep, yep. Nice. Ah. What? It's hey, you know, it's first. almost like we've done a few of these before. Cold, not hot. Bringing this big boy, yeah, it adds a little weight, but man, I got all the goodies. It's 360 calories in this guy. That's insane, 95 grams of carbs. So that is exactly what I want. I'm so stoked I brought this. Let's uh, shoot that guy in there. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Nice, I am stoked on this bag. All time favorite cookie. So much protein. I know some people will, will say that 
Lenny's and Larry's or whatever this is called tastes like cardboard. This is the only flavor I like. This and lemon poppy seed. But the white chocolate macadamia nut, not sponsored. I'd love to get sponsored. What do you got going on? Mm -hmm. All right, time to ride for the rest of my life. You know, I think what I liked about this one was you really were um, in sync. Yeah, we, we went out from there and started deeper into the mountains. And I thought we were in the Solitario, but then we went over another mountain and you see these jagged rocks on each side of the hill and you're like, oh, that's the Solitario. Okay, okay, okay. It's it's hooked. We're, uh, move your arm. Oh my goodness. I know, I'm pulling because it's, yeah, there you go. Got it? Watch your leg. Ah, it hooked your leg again. And you're like, oh boy, <laughs> we're getting deep now. And it was, it was pretty evident, the change of terrain. You never really know what's out there, um, and, but this section, it looked pretty manageable. A couple little hike -a bikes but it was mostly doable, but it was, it was really getting tough. You know, that's when, you know, our average speed was dropping from 12 to 11 miles per hour to 10 miles per hour to, you know, we're basically carrying our bike up a staircase. We have 300 miles to go, like 305 to be exact. Let's just say this is gonna be pretty tough. I do have a thorn in my left hand that's just digging deeper and deeper with every bump. I'm trying to tune that out, par for the course. I usually block those things or don't talk about those things that are difficult. I promise to talk about them more. Um, I'm not gonna I'm not going to bemoan it because it's expected, but man, having a, a small needle from one of these sharp things in your hand, like driving in deeper. Look at this cactus, man. Purple. Um, yeah, not, uh, not likely to be good, but hopefully it'll go away. Jeremiah is the pro mountain biker, right? He's always the one that's going so much better than me. And I don't know if it's because I had the suspension fork and if that made a difference or if it's just that I've been really working on my skills, there was a lot of times where I was cleaning the exact section he was doing. And so as we were going through what usually would be me walking these single tracks and Jeremiah up the road and, and you know, being kind of mad that I'm slowing him down, the fact that I was staying with him, it built my confidence to the moon. And then I just started really believing in myself that I belong. I believed in myself that I was an athlete. And I started telling myself like, I, I am an athlete, not just a filmmaker. And I think that's usually what I do is, is I'm always like, well, I'm a filmmaker that rides bikes. Right now I'm getting into the mind that no man, I, I'm, I'm hanging with JB. We are doing this together as athletes. You. Ah, dang it. Wow. Wow is all I can say. And you know, I think I've really grown as a person because last year having this kind of route, I don't know, maybe I would have kicked some rocks. Maybe I'd have kicked some bushes. This year, I'm a new man. He got stuck by this like hook thing. I, I've got 
cactuses all over me, just sticking out of me. And I'm having the time of my life. Uh, it's warm, I love it. And we're about to go down this caldera. Pretty sketchy, I mean, let's take a look at the rocks real quick. All right, so we have big boys, yeah? We've got medium sharp boys. We've, you know, more of those. We got tiny little, make your front end go in the direction you don't want it to go in, boys. Um, sharp things that stab you. It's a hostile environment out here and it's really loose and loose and goose. And I am thinking Canyon a thousand times over for this suspension fork. Yeah, I wish I had one, I'm not gonna lie. God damn. Oh, no, yes, whoa. Tyler said he, he said he wanted hard, so I guess here we go. And I don't really want to have like a full on temper tantrum right now, but I'm kind of about to. Holy shit, I don't even see a trail. I was so happy until this point. I have no idea what, I mean, this is literally just wilderness. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's not good, not good. We're in big trouble now. Getting stuck out here in the dark is pretty not safe. Oh. It's, I'm literally just walking through a cactus. Let go! Let go of me! Oh my god. No, I can't, I can't go anywhere. So we're hiking, pushing our bikes, dragging our bikes through brush. It is just a brutal saga. I'm just like, this is not going well. I mean, we are just hitting problem after problem after problem. There's a quote, and I can't remember totally how it goes, but it's like, danger is real, fear is a choice. I'm not afraid, but I am recognizing that there is real danger here, real life-threatening danger. This isn't just, hey, we're on a bike ride and we're trying to make it look hard for YouTube and yada, yada, yada. I mean, we, we are in real proper danger. So I'm stepping very carefully. I'm watching very carefully. I'm also trying to manage my fueling and my water because there's no water out here. It, there, there's zero water. So if something happened and we couldn't get to the crew, cause look, there's no safety net. Even though, yeah, we're self-supported, sure, cool. Uh, but we have a film crew, you would say. Well, right now there is there is no film crew with us. There is no support if something happens and we have to cheat, okay? There isn't a safety net. 
And so I'm really trying to make sure I drink slowly and not just guzzle, even though it's getting very hot. We're baking in the sun. Oh, hey there, bud. Welcome to another episode of What the F*** Am I Doing, eh? Well, I'm getting poked by cactuses. We have been walking on stuff like this. I don't know if you can see it. It does no justice. Ow! There's cactus everywhere, bro. Uh, this does no justice. There's no way you're gonna look at that and be like, He's just making vegan excuses again. Just enjoy the ride. I am, I was enjoying the ride. I mean, I'm still in a pretty positive mental space, but as of right now, uh, things aren't looking up. I mean, it's taken us, well, I don't know, is it two miles and it's like three hours? It was just terrible. Yeah. I just feel, I'm starting to feel like this project's just not gonna happen. I mean, it's just uh, a dud, you know? I'm, I'm really feeling pressure because I made the route. And it's sort of difficult because you wanna make, I mean, an impossible route. I mean, of course you could just make it completely impossible. Or you can do a route that everybody else has done and try to do it like a minute faster, but that's not very challenging. And so every time we do one of these projects, there, there's a crux or something that's, you know, a question mark. And sometimes a question mark reveals this incredible trail that is an old Spanish trail cutting through the mountains and switchbacks. And in this case, it was absolute frustration. As part of what makes an impossible route episode is that we just don't know what's out here. And that's part of the magic. It's part of the challenge. It's part of the difficulty, part of the disappointment. I really think there's no way we're gonna finish this uh, based on how fast we're going. And so I just kept reciting to myself, I will finish, 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 I will finish. So with this gigantic bag on my back, I was able to bring fresh produce. This orange is going to be a lifesaver. I'm pretty jealous right now. I will absolutely share this with you, sir. If you go back in time and don't make this the route. Visible track that used to be a road. It is improving. I will give you that. Oh, thanks. Well, we get over this ridge and out of this freaking solitario volcano thing. I think we can do it. That is the best orange ever. Oh my God. I felt like it just, oh my God. I have orange gasm. Oh my God. Now this part started off impossibly hard and then actually, as we kept going, it got a little easier and a little easier. And when I say easier, I mean, you're still hiking and walking every, you know, 10, 15 feet, and then you ride for 10 or 15 feet. So I'm easy is not really the word, but it's getting better. It's trending in a better direction. So that's giving you a little bit of hope, right? When things are getting better slowly, but surely you can project out that it's going to be okay. We just walked through all that. Bro, I'm such a rambling man. Like I'm such a indigenous species out here. Your boy's just thriving. About to just live. Hey babe, I'll send you a postcard. This is our new home. Middle of nowhere. <sighs> Exit the solitario. I think. I think we made it out.
Yes! Yeah! Yeah, dude! Life's a spectrum, man. You know, if I sit in my office for a couple weeks and I edit a video, all of a sudden, you know, me not having hot coffee becomes a crisis. My computer running slow, nine out of 10. Like I'm flipping my desk over, right? Cause you have no real spectrum of what really suck is that's what i love about this you get out here and you recalibrate your spectrum and so right now we're on a rough road this is gnarly but it feels like glass compared to what we have just been doing for the last three hours it's smooth it's fast and i love it That was rough. So we finally made it to Terralinga. But I'm gonna tell you what, that was just traumatizing. Um, that was rough, the solitario. I've got spines still sticking out of my shins. I'm gonna try to pluck a couple of those while we wait for some tacos, because I got tweezers in my little first aid kit. Um, Tyler. I'm rolling, man, it's, I mean. He was in a bad way though. I was angry. It's on camera. I was angry. Okay, I wasn't okay. in a bad way. You're trying to make, I, I've been flying all day. I, I wasn't suffering. I wasn't slow. I was just very angry that we were hiking through nowhere. I but get that, that. But I'm over it and let's get it done. Now, mentally, I am so ready to keep going. And since I'm a night owl, just already, it just seems to work with my body well. Like I'm excited to ride at night. This is what I want to do. Jeremiah, not so much. And I'm, I'm kind of going through an energy slump, you know, after eating and my motivation level at this point is definitely at a low water mark. Racing, cross country, racing, you know, a six hour, 100 mile race, but then, you know, once you're getting to 10, 12, 13 hours, like that's, that's not my bag, you know. I like sleep, uh, but I can tell Tyler, you know, his, his energy's up. Looks like he just started riding and, uh, you know, he's the one encouraging me. Uh, oftentimes in these projects, I'm the one that's encouraging him and picking him up and, you know, this time he's like, you know, you'll come around, you're gonna, kind of get through this phase and you know once the daylight comes back your circadian rhythm's gonna <laughs> so you know it's kind of a, a change of you know a change of roles on that one and that pre pre-dawn business that's what I'm worried about I'm gonna be like ready to yeah fall asleep after midnight 
think. But maybe the endorphins will kick in. Yeah, the night time is good. Like I'm telling you, it's but, around three to four. That that witching hour is just it's brutal. But the second you see this, you know, just a little blue tint on the horizon, yeah. it all changes. Well, if I fall asleep, you gotta find a scorpion and just put it on my ass. Okay. You know, wake me up. When nighttime falls, it just gives you like a whole new body. Round three, four gets really rough. And then the circadian rhythm kicks in once the, mo the sunrise, and then you get another body again. I'll take his word for it. I'm feeling kind of like bloated on eating all those tacos. It hey probably. Man. You I'm, ate 17 I'm paying steak for tacos it. from a taqueria. <laughs> I mean, of course you're gonna feel a little bloated. <laughs> p.m. and we're doing this beautiful road you can just see the outline of the mountains the moon is up the stars are just hanging like little crystals in the sky it's just beautiful and I turn my light off Tyler turns his light off me and Jeremiah start riding with no headlights uh, in the middle of Big Bend National Park and all it is is we're just floating through the universe the stars are unbelievable. We can see the road from the moonlight. It feels like a virtual reality game because you can't really see anything peripheral, so it just feels like a treadmill going underneath you while you're flying through space. And there's just this moment of peace I don't really know how to explain it. I, it's, it. There's just no real vocabulary to explain this moment where you feel small against the backdrop of, of the cosmos, but also that you feel big and proud of yourself for existing in this moment. My body, my machine, my mind, right now, trifecta of victory. I'm getting more and more comfortable with flying through the night on a gravel bike. Uh, the road is pretty technical, washboardy, has some sand pitches, and it's rolling. I mean, you're up and you're having to go real hard and then you're flying down and you're up and you're down and you're up and you're down. Now, Jeremiah is kind of quiet. And, uh, and, and I can tell he's suffering a little bit. All right, it's like just after one. I had a low spot back there half an hour ago. I didn't really talk to Tyler about it like I normally don't. And uh, kind of hard to see in the dark. But um, yeah, you get to these low spots and uh, you know, I was like looking at the map only a third of the way there. It's like 1.30 in the morning. And icy cold air coming down from the mountainside. It's just bleak, dark out, everything hurts. And uh, it's like, I don't know if we can make it, but 
here 20 minutes later, have my s'mores. Life is good. Rolling again. Have a bit of optimism. This goes to show you gotta just wait it out because it's always gonna get better. Almost no matter what it is. Uh, or you die. One of the two definitely will happen. Um, so hang in there. It's almost three in the morning and we're rolling along. Uh, spirits are high. It's magical out here in a really weird way. Um, Jeremiah said it's like dreamlike. It really is because there's not, you don't see anything. It's just this, and you don't hear anything. There's like, it's almost like a sensory deprivation tank. Good morning. It is five in the morning and Jeremiah's gonna take a poop. Here's the thing that we've learned over these is that when one person needs to stop, the other person, you know, whatever they need to do, try to get that done so that you're not one person stopping and then the next person stopping and yada yada, like be efficient with your time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm out of water in my bottles and I have a ton of water in my hydration pack. Okay, I've messed with camel packs. I was, I'm not a huge fan of camel packs, but these Ospreys, wow. Um, not sponsored. I bought this full pop, dude. No, not even a discount. I hit up Pace and McHugh and I was like, bro, hit me with a discount. And he said, no. It has wasted so much water. Jesus Christ. Bingo. What was I saying, dude? I'm so delirious. I hit it pacing and I was like, yo, hit me with that discount. And he said, no. Also, do you know that one time there was a windstorm and a tree fell on my house and there was an osprey in the nest and it plowed into our, uh, into our roof. And then I went on the roof and I had to save this osprey. It was my first time ever holding a bird of prey. And the thing was gnarly. It didn't make it. It died. But we kept it in our house for like a week. <laughs> yeah, you're tripping over there. <laughs> I should probably clarify. I didn't keep the osprey in my house. And, and that's why it died. It, its wing was broken. And we were trying to save it. We, and it was, it was a baby. But it was huge. And then the mom was flying all around. It was like all mad. And... Dude, the beak on that thing, but we tried, we tried to feed it, we tried to do all sorts of, you know, just be a loving people, whatever. Whew. Nice to sit down for a second. Um, stopping for a snack, took a dump. Tyler's telling stories about ospreys, other crazy stuff that's part of his life. <laughs> We're 70, 175 miles in. Um, spirits are actually pretty decent. Um, but I think that's because we're moving, you know, I think with the uh, hiking and stuff that we encountered earlier, it was extremely frustrating, but now we're at least able to roll. Um, lights are working, bikes working great. And yeah, so let's do this. Good morning. So Right now is definitely the hardest part where you're about an hour before sunrise and your circadian rhythm is just like screaming at you to go to sleep. But as soon as the sun peaks over, we'll get a second wind or a third wind. But we are, what are we, 180 miles in. And here's what's so crazy. Let's say we ended at that taqueria. And that was the ride for the day. We would have been shelled. We would have been just laying there on the ground and been like, wow, what a hard, epic day. But since the ride is so much further, you just, it's not even a big deal. You're just going. It's crazy. And to be honest, that taqueria 
is the only time we stopped at all. Like the rest of this ride, the 16, 17 hours of ride time has just pretty much been on the go. Like we haven't stopped and hung out at a gas station or anything. It's nuts. And Tyler's got the suspension fork, really, really good setup. And you know, for me, I'm just, yeah, getting a really, um, a lot of shock in my arms from the um, bumps. So it's really a challenge. You know, this is outside of my wheelhouse. Yeah, Tyler's got more experience with this uh, ultra stuff. I'm just thinking about sunrise. Yeah. I think the, the art for this thing, at least for me, is just to look at the, look at the trail in front of me, not think about anything else. And the next milestone is sunrise and right now 605 so i mean we should see sunrise in an hour and we should see the hints of that sliver of blue and gold of the sun are hitting us. It's surprisingly late though, 7.30 before we get the first rays of sun. Uh, the wind is picked up and it's blustery. There's a cold front coming in from the north. It's supposed to be 29 degrees tonight, 30 mile per hour winds. Um, today's highs aren't going to get much above 45. So We'll see, maybe 50 down low. Um, optimistic we can go until sunset, but doubt we're gonna go after that. So it would take some serious luck to complete this one. It looks like a, a, a straight up toss up. So we were able to get that chest at mile 100 and mile 200. We are a little 10 miles away from that, um, which is good because I'm out of water, I'm out of food. Uh, we definitely, definitely need that, that resupply, but sun's coming up, it's gonna start getting warm. And then we've got to ride another 130 miles, 140 miles. Oh, big day, man. Big day, big two days, nights. It's all running together. The sky is lighting up. I can turn off the headlamp. We're rolling through this awesome like mesa and canyon terrain of chalk colored rock and brown stones and I'm having a good time and, and I'm a morning person. So, I mean, I'm like getting some energy back. And this is where Jeremiah now has this huge upswing because he's, he's a morning person. So he starts getting all talkative again and, and up. And I'm like, dude, you know, you know when you don't like morning people because they're always chatting you up in the morning and it's like, dude, chill, man, it's too early. That was me. Man, it was biting cold. It was really, really frigid. And I, I wasn't expecting it to get colder as the sun came up. So we're, we're putting our layers on and pushing into the headwind. And yeah, Tyler was not too happy at that point. Man, you think it'd be warm in the desert. It is cold and it's windy and we have a gnarly headwind. And it's like 40, I mean, it's, it is cold. Uh, probably more with the wind chill. 
We are closing in on 200 miles. It's just the terrain is so slow. It's so hard to see. Because people will be like, oh, well, it took you 24 hours to go 200 miles. Wow, you're slow. Unbound, it takes Peter Stetton a six. And it's like, dude, it's totally different. It's not even the same. It's not even the same world. It's crazy out here. but you didn't win, oh. <laughs> I wish there was a giant thing of pancakes with like a French press of coffee. Yeah, Whoa! Uh, PB&J? PB yeah. One of these is gonna disappear right now. Oh my goodness. And I actually made the small mistake of laying down. Uh, I don't remember laying down. My body seemed to be like, hey, you need sleep. And then all of a sudden I kind of am like opening my eyes and I'm eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich while napping. I, I honestly think that I sort of took a, like a 20 second nap. Uh, it was really strange how my brain shut off, but I was still eating at the same time. At the beginning of this, I was saying like how good I was feeling and that I wasn't going to be laying on the ground contemplating the universe this time. Oh, damn it, there's dirt in my PB and shit. God damn it. This was so good. Oh, my God. To complete the route in its entirety, which we are right now at 210 miles, we have to go another 140 miles. There's no way really we're going to be able to do that within the daytime. So that means we're going to have to go into a second night and we have to go through that solitario area. Man. Definitely have done more hours of riding than I've ever done before. Most calories I've ever done in a ride thus far, close to 16,000 calories burned. That's cool, but looking at the map, i am realized that we have to go all the way back across this side of the national park. 
and then up into the Solitario, that shark fin shaped mountain, back into the caldera of the volcano in the dark. And being in there in the dark at night, bushwhacking through creosote bush and cactus, I mean, it's just dangerous. Yeah, I think, I think this one's impossible um, to try to do in basically two days and one night. And I'm good with that. You know, I think, you know, we set these uh, constraints, you know, can we do it nonstop? Maybe someone can and I look forward to seeing them try. But uh, for us, I think we've reached our limit. At the point which you fail is usually a low point in the story. And then it's just, man, we, this sucks. But since we're not going through that area and we're gonna change the route, look, we're still uh, 120 miles or something from, from you know, the town that we started in. But we get to ride pavement the whole way and it's got a 35 mile an hour tailwind. So yeah, we're not gonna go through the original route, but we're still gonna clock over 300 miles and it's going to be glorious. Look, the impossible route this time kind of, you know, there's some good parts out there, but you know, in general, we, you know, we failed the mission, but this is a cherry on the top. This is, this is a parting gift from Texas. Yeah. Thank you, Texas. It's been good. <laughs>
can't wait to be done, though. Yeah. Pretty looking forward to being done. I think we're gonna ride 300 miles, like pretty much nonstop. Usually you would think the last 65 miles of a 314 mile bike ride would be the worst. This for me was the best. I was so proud of myself that I didn't completely fall apart. I was so proud of myself that I was still riding strong. I'm so happy, man. I'm so happy. I, I can't really even begin to describe where what, what I should be feeling, which is utter just like, I'm cracked and, and destroyed and we're now at this point 33 hours into the day 33 hours of riding we actually hit this like crazy steep climb on the border of Mexico uh, Rio Grande splitting it uh, and I'm pushing it up this climb I often say I'm an average person that I'm just an average guy and you know just trying to tell a story and I, I genuinely feel that way, that I am just, I'm no one special, I'm nothing special, I'm just an average dude. In this moment, I, I don't know how to say, I felt, I guess the, I would say like elite, but that, I don't want to say that word, but I just felt above average. I felt like this is the sixth time we've done something that, that I should never have done. I should never have been able to do. I'm not qualified to do these things, yet this is the sixth one. I, I felt special. I felt above average. I felt proud. I felt like an athlete. I felt pride. But there's this moment, Jeremiah and I were side by side. He's been up and down, I've been up and down. And we've just leaned on each other in such an amazing way. Personally, I'm just reflecting on all of the trips of being with Jeremiah in Hawaii and in Death Valley, in Virginia, in Montana, Colorado. And now West Texas. I'm thinking back on this, the, you know, what feels like a lifetime ago, which was just the morning before this, riding through this crazy rock section where I, I'm riding well, and then we have single track and then hiking and then through the night. So we roll in and, and uh, come into the park where we had set out ages ago. I mean, it felt like two days ago, three days ago, like it was just so strange that that was one continuous bike ride. 35 hours and 11 minutes, actually 15 hours longer than my longest ever ride. Uh, and that's when it sunk in. That was crazy. <laughs> I, I have a, I'm usually a man of a lot of words. I don't have many of them right now. But I'll say two things. Me and this man had to lean each other, lean on each other the, the whole, I don't even know how, 313 miles. He didn't quit, so I didn't quit. I didn't quit, so he didn't quit. 
and that like pyramid structure we just leaned against each other and that was so just inspiring and amazing and like you when we've done that six times now and it's just really a special bond with some guy that i kind of barely know like i mean we you know what i mean like <laughs> like i don't really we do these crazy adventures together and we have this crazy ah. thing but like outside of this you that's know, a team. That's, yeah. that's what a team is. You know, we come together and we do the thing. We, we've done the thing. We do the thing, you know? And I, I think it's, uh, and we have mutual respect, and, but we're different. But when it comes to when the shit hits the fan, we're together. And I think that's, that's why it works. That's why it works. That's why we do it. I pull it off rather. The second thing I want to say is that if you're watching this, there's probably something that you uh, are afraid to do. There's a climb that you think you can't do. There's a sport that you want to do, but you think you can't. Whatever it is that you think that you can't do and you're putting it off and you're like, well, one day I'll train and I'll yet. Just do it. Just go and do it. There's no reason I should have been able to do this. There's no reason I should have been able to do this six times, but especially this one. This is 314 miles. I'm not qualified to do this, but you just do it. And here's the thing, one of two things is gonna happen. One, you're gonna fail, okay? But that's no different than you not trying it, okay? So you're kind of in the same spot, you just have more experiences when you fail or you succeed and that's pretty fucking badass and you might surprise yourself so whatever it is if you're watching this click hella ads like you know all that kind of stuff but then <laughs> go and do the thing that you are putting off do it now hell yeah do it now give me a, a hug give me action in a short condensed version the greatest cure for fear is action. Boom. That's the quote. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go.